Hello and welcome. I'm Clueless Mike and you're watching Modeling for Advantage. So today's unboxing is one of my favourites. It is the Adeptus Custodes Combat Patrol. I mean, I say Adeptus Custodes, some people say Adeptus Custodes, that annoys my mate Paul. Adeptus Custodes, I'm told, is the proper way of saying it. So let's see what we have got in the lovely box. Okay, so the Adeptus Custodes, the guardians of the Emperor himself, struggling with the box, obviously got excellent armour, because the box is well armoured. Uh, so they are the servants of the Emperor, the servants of the throne, some may say. Uh, they are also known as the Ten Thousand as there were originally 10,000 of them genetically engineered by the Golden Man uh, rule book or uh, the instruction booklet. Um, this is probably a pretty useful one because there are lots of different ways to build the models in this um, uh, kit, which I shall go into. Uh, so it's quite a useful one telling you all the different ways the bits fit together. Most of them will fit together in multiple ways. Um, and a lot of them bits are interchangeable, so they're not kind of like set poses on particular models, uh, which is what I really like in a multi-pose kit. We've got bases, we've got 32 mils there, which are for the Sisters of Silence in the box. Then we have 40 mils for the actual custodians themselves. What have we got next? So this is the Custodian Guard sprue. I think it's all on one sprue. You've got five Custodian Guard on this sprue. Um, they come with two different options of armament. So you either have a Guardian Spear, which is a bit higher strength in combat and has a bit longer range shooting, or you have a Sentinel Blade, which has shorter range shooting, not quite as high strength in combat, but when you take a Sentinel Blade, you get to take a Presidium Shield, which gives them plus one to their armor save. Um, it's pretty good. Um, neither option is definitely better than the other. The shields are slightly more favoured because when you're playing Custodes, you're in it for survivability. Um, so they're the base um, options to take, but this kit is pretty good because you can make lots of other stuff with it. I'm looking at this sprue and thinking there's actually a, another sprue down here somewhere. I'm guessing. Bear with me while I put that down. No, there doesn't appear to be, so we're going to have to look closely at this sprue because there's something that I was looking for that I couldn't see. So this sprue should have on it, ah, there it is, it's because it's not attached yet. It's a Vexilla, so a standard bearer for the Custodes. Ah, and there's the other two halves there and there. So you can make various things out of this kit. You can make the basic Custodes models. Um, you can make a Vexilla, who's an elite choice, really good. Most armies um, will have at least one in. Um, you can also make a character out of this. So there's a nice cloak you could stick on your character. You can just stick that on your sergeant dude if you fancy as well. But a really nice cloak, and you can make a really nice character out of them as well. So a captain general in this case. Um, you get all kinds of little doodads, you've got misericordia knives to stick on, you get lots of little armour plates to stick on, different head options, just a really nice kit. I've got, I think, 12 custodian guard, maybe close to 15, and I've posed them all completely differently, no two models look alike, so you can get real good usage out of this kit, really nice. Uh, next up, we have the Sisters of Silence. Now, this box contains two sets of Sisters of Silence. I'm just going to find a complete set. So this is a complete set of five models. Um, they are pretty cool. Um, they look awesome. When these first came out, I was really pleased with them. They were one of the first of the new wave of um, GW female models where actually look like women, but don't look like sexually stylized women. Uh, really good models, uh, really cool looking armor. You can give them either bolt guns, flamers, or great big swords. The swords look best, but are the worst rules wise, because you really don't need um, a sword wielding toughness free model in an army of custodians. Um, they cover the close combat perfectly well themselves. So you generally want either flamers for horde duty or you want bolt guns to sit back on objectives. Uh, so, but that is those models there. I'm just seeing if there's anything particularly interesting about them. No, you can make a character model out of this if you wanted. Um, but the problem with this is that you get five models on there. If you make a character model out of it to use, then you're left with four models and you can't take squads of four. Whereas the custodian guard kit, 
you can make a character and a Vexilla, but you can take the Custodians in squads of three, so the other three are still perfectly usable. So they kind of missed a trick when writing the unit sizes for this. They should have gone a unit size of four plus, and then they would have allowed extra models to be made into characters, and also fitting into transports. Their transport is a Rhino, um, so you couldn't take two squads of five plus a character because it only holds ten models. Just a slight bugbear of mine. I mean, you can take a squad of nine plus a character, and that's probably how you'd make them if you wanted to. But yeah, just a, a small bugbear. So you get two sets of the Sisters of Silence in here. It's a way to fill out the box. And also, I may be wrong here, but I think Games Workshop probably have a points limit they're aiming for for these boxes, as well as a price limit. So you don't want to have a set price limit of, say, £80 or however much this box is um, retail, um, and then stick a 1,000 points in it, because then people would just buy these boxes and not buy the other stuff. So it's a good way of filling out the box contents while also not adding too many points, because Thustodians are massive amounts of points, but the Sister Silence are not. Then we move on to the real star of this kit. These are the Jet Bikes. Um, they are amazing models. I love these models. I've got seven jet bikes. Um, they're just fab. Uh, they just look big and meaty and fast and dangerous. Uh, they've got excellent weapon options. You can take either a hurricane bolter, brilliant at killing um, chaff units and such, or you can take the missile launcher, which is basically a melter missile. So it's really good, especially when you're super accurate like a custodian is. Uh, there's only really three poses you can do with the models because they come with these giant great spears. Here's a giant great spear here. Um, and there's not a whole lot you can do with them because they either go out to the side or in. I found to get a little bit of posability out of mine because I've got more than the base three. Um, I shave the arm there. I shave the angle that it's holding to the body on. So instead of being flat to the body and going straight like that, I'd shave it slightly so it would angle the spear. You don't need to do it very much, but because the spear is such a big part of the model, altering the angle it comes out from the base torso really changes the look of the model. Um, so I found that a good way to slightly differentiate the squad and make it look like they're not all clones of each other. The other way to do that is to alter the head slightly. So the heads, let's see if we can find one on here. There's a head there, but they have these ginormous plumes on them like this that are trailing behind. So I found a good way to help the models look a little different is to have the head looking in different directions on models that are similarly posed, because then the plume running off in different direction gives a kind of like different flow to the model to again make them look slightly different. Because best one in the world, you can't do anything with the bike and the legs and the arms particularly, certainly the arm holding onto the jet bike, because they are that's the only way it will go together. But that's a good tip for getting just a little bit of a non-conformity out of the uh, kit. So there's another one here. One of these, and I suspect it's this one as it's separate, can be made into a shield captain on bike, which you want to do because it's probably the best unit in the codex. The only difference between the shield captain on bike and the actual normal bikers, as I'm trying to find it, is there is a bare head to use. Um, so we're going to see if we can find it on here. Trying to find a single head, there we go, there is your difference there. A uh, little bear head to use. You can use any of the bear heads from the other custo kits as well. Uh, so that is those. Then we have a choice of bases, which is quite interesting. I mean, interesting to those of you like me who find that kind of thing interesting. You have these little oval bases, at which you then have to drill a hole and stick on one of these. You want to glue this to the jet bike because it will not stick in the little hole provided for the little so a bit, or you get these circular ones. Now, previously, I had mine on the circular bases, partly because it's a bit easier to stick it in there, and I quite liked flying models to have a kind of clear base on them. But rules-wise, I found it's much easier to swap them to these. Reason being, this is a similar size to the actual bike itself, so the bike itself will sit over and fill out that. So when you've all got six of them you're trying to use, you can more easily get them in places behind terrain on top of stuff because that fills out the bike shape, whereas this sticks out a centimetre either side of the bike. And I found it really made it quite hard to tessellate them into areas and such. So just for pure gaming reasons, I would recommend putting these bases on them. But obviously you can use whichever you prefer. And then we have some transfers. 
Uh, now this is a bit weird. I saw this on the internet earlier this week and it's strange that I'm opening this box this week. So inside the custodian guard and the custodian starter set here, you get some Horus Heresy transfer sheets. We have Terminator shoulder pads, Thousand Suns, Tactical Squad, Space Wolf, Tactical Squad uh, for Space Wolf markings. I mean, these will be useful for the Kaiser's army. And Space Wolf uh, Legion shoulder pads for Vexil eyes. Oh, just all kinds of weird Space Wolf stuff. But the reason this is in here is at the very bottom here, I'm hoping you can focus in on it, uh, is Sisters of Silence. It gives you four tiny Aquilas, which are designed to go somewhere on a Sister of Silence. So that is why you have two sets of Horus Heresy transfer sheets in here. I mean, these can't be that difficult to produce. You'd have thought they could have just knocked something slightly different up for it. But the problem is, the um, custodians themselves, there is nowhere on there you'd want to put a transfer. The armour is completely covered in kind of filigree and detail and such. Um, so there's nowhere to put a transfer. So you don't really need the transfers. And these tiny ones for the Sister Silence, I don't think you need them either. So I would have just totally left them out of the box. Uh, Value-wise, what are we going to use from in here? More or less everything. So the way you have to build a custodian army is you have to take um, at least one troop unit of custodians before you can take a Sisters of Silence unit um, in the same slot. So if you want a troop choice Sister of Silence, which are the ones with the bolt guns, you have to take a normal custodian guard squad. So most custodian armies will be made up of two custodian guard squads and one Sister of Silence squad to start, and then you fill out the other slots. So certainly the basic custodians and the characters they can make will definitely be used in every army especially the Vexilla, um, and then you'll use at least one of the Sisters of Silence, but I actually think they're reasonably good to get extra of. I like all three types of them. The Flamers, I think a squad of nine plus a character with a Flamer in a Rhino is actually a really good unit. Um, then the bikes, the Virtus Predator bikes, you're always going to take them, mainly because they're the only solid choice of anti-tank in the entire army, unless you're going for a Land Raider, which, let's face it, you're not going to. Um, that means that the bikes are going to be taken, plus they're just awesome. They're fast. They're one of the only fast things in the Codex. They're super tough, um, and they are amazingly deadly in close combat as well. And you're going to want to build a Captain on Bike, um, which is a slight problem because you have to take Virtus Praetors in threes, and if you build the Captain on Bike, you're left with two spares. So you're ideally going to want two of this box, so you can have a squad of five, a Captain on Bike, and then enough troops to fill out your army. So, really good value box. Highly recommend it. Thanks for watching. If you're still here and you're looking for ways to support the channel, there's obviously a lot of ways down in the description. But a key way is to use our affiliate links to Whaling Games and others. You buy your models from them, it doesn't cost you a penny more, and we earn a little bit of commission. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.